Now, success with multiple generations is not that you have just one generation in the workforce, as we might say in the classroom. Um, you have all of these working simultaneously. Um, so you might think creatively about reward strategies. What do your millennials want? What do your baby boomers want? Like the JetBlue example, how will you pick your reward packages from some pot of money? It's not just about cash. There may be other goals. You want to take off Friday? Great. We have a program for that. It's called 20% less pay, okay? <laughs> and uh, there you go, all right? So that's important to you, all right? <laughs> that's, that's what we call it, right? Um, and then, you know, vast majority of people, they're looking for prospects and their benefits, right? And, you know, they want to alter those. They want to know that they have control over that. And they want to be personally involved and see that their input led to the decision that was made. Millennials love to solve problems show that they made it better, streamline it, take cost out, take time out, make it technologically more sophisticated. Great. Set them up on task to do that. You know, provide them those challenges. Give them that creativity. You might even have to alter how they're, they're working so that some of their time is to look at those activities in a sort of a skunk works project way to say, you've got some time to help us get better and do things. Or research things. Are there partners we should be working with? Could we find a better partner, supplier, what have you, okay? And this is the one that never ends, and it can be a little uncomfortable at first, I'll be honest, is they love feedback, right? Constant, regular feedback. And so I'll share with you, my students, I send them an email after they get their homework, and I write in, you know, here's what you did well, here's what you didn't do well, and of course, you know, here's your final grade. Um, I know they read that stuff right away. I mean, they'll fire back a response within 30 seconds, right? Oh, thank you so much for the detailed feedback. You know, other people don't give me this. That's so helpful, right? <clears throat> and so it's not hard to do. It's a little discomforting at first, as I mentioned, the level of detail that you might provide, but someone in the workforce needs that, right? They expect that, and they'll respect you for providing that. They also res expect and respect you giving them latitude. Let them do something without telling them exactly how to do it. Right? And within your membership and growing your society, you might think about that. You know, what does a secretary or treasurer or president of young members uh, uh, association, what should they do? Maybe let them figure it out for a little bit, right? And, and come back with what they think the priorities would be. They like flexible work schedules. I think everybody does, but they are willing, as I mentioned, to, to trade that for pay in some ways. Um, they encourage and want you to provide them learning opportunities, mentorships. And they really believe, and this is a challenge to organizations probably like yours, um, who say, we value tenure, right? And academia is the worst at this. You've been here 20 years, you get to be president. You've been here 30 years, you get to be, you know, whatever. Okay, run for ADA. They would look at that and say, uh, no, no, I mean, if I'm gonna be involved, I wanna get involved quickly, I wanna make a difference, I wanna be in a leadership role, I want results. I want to be able to contribute and not wait in line. And so that might be a challenge to an organization where you say, hey, the trajectory has a certain tenure. Open up a new line. Maybe there's a, a line for younger members or an, other initiatives that they might be able to work on. Okay? There are a lot of things that you could do to leverage this wave. Make it part of your success and business. They're your customers. They're your employees. They're even your children. You help make this happen. Thank you so much. And uh, the encourage and welcome dialogue and regular feedback. Have a sit down with them uh, weekly. How did, how did it go this week? What worked well? What didn't? Right? Ask them before you tell them, I saw you do the following. Right? Save that for second. Right? And because they may accept it first. They might acknowledge it. And conversation can go much more um, easily because of that. Help them with their development. Ask them what they think their development needs are, um, provide opportunities for advancement. Those can be small steps. It's not that everyone is going to become, you know, the owner and the head of the practice. So, you know, someone comes into your practice at an entry level. How do you show that you have advanced them in some capacity? They get to learn a new piece of equipment. They get to go to a program. They, maybe they get to come here or some other kind of class, right? That can be in small steps. And that's, in fact, what companies are doing. It sounds a little insincere, I know, and you think, hey, we just expected to go from manager to director to VP, well, companies are just putting a whole bunch of titles in between. And those titles have different recognition, and even they have different pay, 
may not be big, but a couple hundred bucks, you know, people feel like I was recognized, right? Even spot bonuses companies do. Hey, you did a great job. So, you know, I put an extra $200 in your paycheck this week, okay? Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really kill the finances of your firm, but the message to the employee is tremendous. The recognition is tremendous, right? And then, you know, consider the request because frequently they're not expensive requests. They're not even unreasonable. It's that your generations, our generations, might initially view them as unfair. We would have never asked for that. How dare you? You know, set, set that attitude aside. Just say, well, well, what's your justification for this? How would we do it? How would we balance it with the other things that we have to do? And in fact, I think you'll see that many of those work brilliantly. <clears throat> and then for Generation X, you know, please show us a little love, right? I mean, everybody forgets us. Uh, we're unappreciated. We're taking care of our parents and our children and, uh, you know, working and paying taxes. So, you know, there are a lot of other issues. Family dynamics, I think, are really big. And so they're at that stage in life where literally they have three generations. And so how do you help them with that? Workplace flexibility is enormous, right? And uh, they probably have to take kids to school and pick them up and all those other things. And so, you know, this was the first generation to try it. First generation were, like I said, where mom, you know, went to work. So I guess just, just help, right? It's, uh, it's reasonable. Um, for baby boomers, I think there are many things. They may feel that rules and tradition are the way things are done. Uh, unfortunately, the generations after them don't really see it that way, right? And so uh, as valuable as those may be in their context, um, companies, organizations now have to be, you know, inclusive and look to results, not just how we do things in the past. But I really do think you can elevate baby boomers by showing that they can be the most valued resource to mentor and coach and advise younger members. And I think they would love doing it. I do think there's some subtleties about how you would have them do it so it doesn't sound authoritarian and slightly offensive. As I mentioned, what do you think versus what I think? And uh, I think pairing them, even individually, if in your workplace or in your organization, you know, Dr. Armstrong mentioned, hey, we have new dentists today. Well, I imagine there are many things that they'd like to achieve in their career. Where would they go for guidance and support and ideas? Maybe they could be appointed a mentor informally. You get together for lunch. You go see a practice for a half a day or something like that. I don't mean to tell you how to do it, but rather that mentorship alignment, I think, is a very natural one that benefits both sides.